Now, before you jump to conclusions, let me explain. Who called you, Mr. Simon? Operation I is in play. I'm initiating the plan. Some of my teachers are complaining about not having supplies. That's fine. I'll send enough to keep them quiet. Miss Jean, join me on a trip to Discovery Mountain, where the air is clear, clear enough to hear your imagination, and where every day is an exercise in faith. Join me for today's expedition in Discovery Mountain. Well, what do you think? Did Mr. Simon answer Isabel's call yesterday? We'll find out in today's episode, which is a special one. Mr. Garcia is exercising his faith, and so are Isabel, Mr. Simon, Yumi, Olivia, oh, and Jake too. Listen carefully to the faith exercises and the verse that Mr. Simon shares. These are wonderful ways to exercise your faith wherever and whoever you are. Now, did you hear that? It sounds like court is in session in Discovery Mountain. Let's join them in today's episode called Whoever. If there are no further questions, defendant, you may leave the witness stand and join your counsel. Oh, thank you, Judge Barber. Court dismissed for a 10 minute recess. Counsel, I'll hear your closing arguments then. Judge Barber, may I approach the bench? We're in recess, Bailiff. Didn't you hear the gavel? Ah, uh, this is more of a personal question. Look, I told you Finnegan... It's not about Finnegan or the painting. Oh? Well, good. I'm sick of that conversation. Listen, Barber, off the record. The defendant, he sounds genuinely sorry for what he's done. Yes, but the evidence shows that he did it. Oh, I agree. But he said he's a changed man. And I believe him. I've heard that plea a thousand times. Uh, Me too. But I think that this guy is for real. I mean, look at him. He's... Oh dear. He's praying with his attorney. Now, if that's for show, it won't work on me. Come on. We've seen those fake prayers before. Look, this looks different. This is a truly repentant man. And you think... Hmm. And you think I should give him a second chance? Well, that's up to you, Judge. But at his age, this guy will perish before his sentence is over. Well, you know what I always say. You do the crime, you do the time. Barbara, you know that I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm aware. Now, I've seen you rule with mercy. What are you accusing me of? (laughs) Nothing. Just as a Christian, I can't ever forget that God is merciful. John 3.16 says that... For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, I've heard it all before, but this guy... Whoever. That's what the verse says. Whoever believes in God has a second chance at life. Well, I'm not God. Don't worry, I'm not arguing that. But we all deserve a second chance when we're truly sorry. Don't we? Well, Bailiff, you have a lot of thoughts this morning. I have a lot of thoughts most mornings. I just usually keep them to myself. I see. Well, let's get on with things, shall we? Court is now back in session. The Honorable Judge Barber presides. Mr. Simon! Mr. Simon, are are, are you here? Ethan, is everything all right? Well, yeah. I have the best story to tell you, though. Oh, well, I have something to tell you, too. The trial this morning. You know the one. Oh, yes, of course. How did Judge Barber rule? The defendant was guilty. Eh, The evidence sure appeared that way. Well, during a recess, I, I talked to Barber. I suggested he show mercy. Oh? Yeah, I even shared John 316 with him. You don't say. Yep. Barber must have listened. He sentenced him to one to three years. Ah, such a short sentence. That means he'll be out in no time. Yeah, he'll have time to think about his mistakes and then create a new life for himself when he's out of jail. 
He has a second chance at life. Exactly. And I think I helped Barbara do the right thing. Ah, that's wonderful news. I thought so. Ethan, let's sit down for a few minutes. Well, sure, Mr. Simon. Or would you like some tea or maybe a smoothie? I have some fresh raspberries. Nah, I'm fine, Mr. Simon. Now, what did you want to tell me? Well, I received a phone call yesterday. No. Now, before you jump to conclusions, let me explain. Who called you, Mr. Simon? Isabel. I know it! Didn't I tell you? As soon as Finnegan showed up talking about antique art and offers to buy, I knew she'd call. Ethan, I... So what did she say? Did she demand the second painting? Or does she want the trekkers now, too, huh? Ethan, I didn't pick up. Oh, so you didn't talk to her? No, I didn't. I'm going to call her back, but I wanted to tell you my intentions first. Well, Mr. Simon, you don't, you don't need my permission to talk to my sister. With everything that happened a decade ago, I thought... She'll hurt you, and she'll hurt this town again. I can't tell you what to do, but not everyone deserves a second chance. I respect your feelings, Ethan. I am going to call her, though. I thought you should know. You can be here if you like. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I need to get back to the courthouse, Mr. Simon. I'll let you know. Don't bother, really. Did I make the right decision? I don't know. But I have to call. Hello? Isabel, is everything all right? Mr. Simon? It's... It's been so long since... I've heard your voice. Isabel, where are you? I, I'm at my school. Can you text me the coordinates of the closest airport? Coordinates? I, uh, yeah, I could look them up. Good. I'll be there this afternoon. What? Oh, Mr. Simon. I'll see you soon, Izzy. Mr. Simon is going to see Isabel. He has a lot to get ready before he can leave. Let's follow him. Hi, Uncle George. Are you here for lunch? Hattie, no, I have to take a trip unexpectedly. Is there any way you could watch Trekkers for me for a few days? Is everything okay? Oh, I'm fine. It's Isabel. She called. Oh, I see. Well, I'm off here in an hour, and I'm not scheduled again until, let's see, Thursday. Perfect. That'll work. Thank you, Hattie. Glad I could help. Oh, Uncle George, wait. Yes? Here, some food for your trip. <sighs> Thank you, Hattie. Oh, don't mention it. Mrs. Simon was in a hurry. Oh, yes, an unexpected trip. Unexpected? Oh, no, did he say where he was going? I'm not sure that I should say... Isabel. I, um... It's all right. We have a plan for this. Deputy Bo, Deputy Bo, pick up. Over. Deputy Bo here. Over. Operation I is in play. I'm initiating the plan. Over. Operation I. Oh, Isabel. Over. Yes, Deputy. You're in charge of the station until further notice. Copy. Good. Over and out. Mr. Simon rushed home and packed an overnight bag, but he was missing something. He ran to the school. Mr. Simon, can I help you find someone? Oh, thanks, Reader. I just need to see Jake. Is he in his classroom? Well, he should be. Thanks. You're in a hurry. Is there an emergency? Jake has the keys to Blue Birdie, and I need them. An unexpected trip? Yes, yes, something's come up. I'll just find Jake. Yes, of course. It might be nothing, but I'd better call Lewis. Hello, reader. Did you see my text? No, but I just saw Mr. Simon. Oh, no. You guessed it. Operation I is happening. I'll be ready. With the keys to Blue Birdie in his hand, Mr. Simon had one more stop to make. Welcome to Discovery Mountain Hospital. How may I help you? Chris, 
Is Dr. Simon available? Oh, hey, Mr. Simon. Dr. Simon is currently with a patient. Would you like to leave her a message? Yes. Yes, that'll work. Just one moment. Wait for the beep and then speak your message into my recorder. Shelly, I have to leave town for a few days. Hattie will watch the store. It's, it's Isabel. I'll send more info when I can. Thank you, Mr. Simon. I'll deliver your message as soon as Dr. Simon is finished with a patient. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. Safe travels. Mr. Simon hurried back to Trekkers. Hattie. I'm here, Uncle George. Don't worry, everything will be fine. <laughs> Don't worry, Gadget will show me where everything is if I forget. Won't you, boy? <laughs> Good boy, Gadget. Thank you, Hattie. Bye. Bye. Okay, Blue Birdie, are you ready? Isabel needs us. Mr. Simon. Lewis, look, I know how you feel, but you're not going to talk me out of my trip. I know. Wait for me. Reader. I'm here. Now, you two aren't going to stop me from making this trip. It's something I have to do. We know Mr. Simon, but we're coming with you. What? Both of you? You're not going to face Isabel on your own. Not on my watch. Guys, I, uh, I don't have time to argue with you. Hop in. Gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. Let's hope for clear skies ahead. Curious about what happens next? Me too. We'll find out right after this. Hi, Miss Jean here. Would you like to stay in the loop with the newest Discovery Mountain and Discovery Mountain Club developments? Well, parents, sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. Visit discoverymountain.com slash newsletter. Mr. Simon, Officer Lewis, and Reader landed in Blue Birdie, and they made their way to Isabel's school. Let's join them. Which way to the school office? Let's ask. Excuse me? Yes? We're visitors and we'd like to check in and get a visitor's badge. <laughs> visitor's badge? Yeah, you don't want just anyone walking in off the street into your school, do you? <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. One I've been asking for for years. But nope, no visitor badges are needed in this school. That's a huge security risk. Yeah, well, no one listens to us teachers, not administration. Hey, get back here with my backpack! And not the students, clearly. We're looking for Miss Garcia. Which way is her classroom? Who are you? Bill collector, landlord. You are clearly a cop. Me? What? I'm not even in uniform. We're friends from her hometown. I'm here to help. I trust you, but you too? I don't know. Look, I'll leave you, Mr. Simon. I'll want the perimeter. I'd still like to check in with the office. The office is that way. Thanks. I'll find you later, Mr. Simon. Okay. Isabel's classroom is right down there, second door on the right. Thank you. As Mr. Simon approached her classroom, Isabel practiced what she would say to him. Oh, I'm so nervous. <clears throat> I, uh, was wondering if you'd be interested in me helping you with some contract work. No, that's not quite right. <clears throat> How would you like to increase your social media presence? Isabel? Uh, miss, Mr. Simon? Is that really you? Isabel, I'm so glad to see you. Uh, Mr. Simon... I was wondering if you'd, uh, if you'd be interested. Izzy, can I still call you that? Uh, uh, uh-huh. Can I give you a hug? Uh, uh-huh. You haven't changed a bit. I'd recognize you anywhere. Oh, Mr. Simon, that's not true. I'm a wreck. But thank you for saying it. Isabel. Come home. Come home to Discovery Mountain. I have Bluebirdy here. We can help you pack up. All this will be behind you. 
come back? Home? Yes, of course. Oh, I, I don't know. I, uh... Izzy, you deserve another chance. Another chance at a happy life. Me? Of course you. I, uh, I... Miss G, why'd you fail me on that test? Layla, I'm talking to someone. That test was bogus. I'll come back later. Okay, Mr. Simon. Miss G! <sighs> Layla, the test wasn't bogus. I think you're describing your study habits. Ah, uh, Isabel, I'll be praying. Mr. Simon sat on a bench outside Isabel's classroom. As he waited, Reader looked for the school office. Excuse me, young man. Who? Me? Yes, I can't seem to find the principal's office. Can you help me? I could, but why don't you just ask him? Who? Principal Weber. He's right over there. Oh, thank you. Now, Weber, we got a good thing going here. Some of my teachers are complaining about not having supplies. That's fine. I'll send enough to keep them quiet. You know, pencils, erasers, that kind of stuff that they would expect. Listen, don't worry. I'll quiet down the suspicions, Weber, and here, for your trouble. What are you doing? Handing me cash in the middle of the school. Relax. No one noticed. You kick back. You're safe. Now, just keep walking. Someone's coming. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Principal Weber. If you have a parent complaint, just file it in the office. Oh, no, no, that's not it. I'm a fellow principal. Oh? Yes, my friends and I are visiting, and, well, I was told we don't need a visitor's badge, but that just didn't sound right to me, and I thought I would... What's your name? Reader. Donovan Reader. Well, Don, it sounds like you know a lot about how you think this school should be run. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I just wanted to be sure we were following the rules, and I was hoping that we could, uh... I said, hands where I can see them. Officer Lewis, what's going on? Are you the principal? Yes. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, sorry, force of habit. I'm Weber, and I'm principal of this school. What's going on here? I caught this young man pickpocketing. Hugo, is that true? Yep. I got Maldonado's wallet out of his back pocket. He didn't even notice. Wow, he's a senior. I know, right? You think we're impressed by this? Stealing is a crime. Aren't you aware of that? Well, that is kind of impressive. Wait, what? what? Just take him to Ms. Garcia. He's her problem. Isabel Garcia? Yep, eighth grade teacher. Right down there, second door on the right. Let's go. Reader, what kind of place is this? It's not like any school I've ever been in. I'd say. I think I just saw the principal take money from a school supply salesperson. A kickback? I don't know, but, but something isn't right around here. No, we've got to get Mr. Simon out of here. Mr. Simon offered to fly Isabel back home to Discovery Mountain. Will she accept? And what is going on in her school? It feels like chaos. We'll check back on things in Discovery Mountain right after this. Hey, it's Sean Boonstra, Speaker Director of The Voice of Prophecy. Has Discovery Mountain been an encouragement to the children in your life? Weekly Discovery Mountain episodes are made possible through the generosity of our supporters. Would you like to join us as a supporter? Call us at 1-877-566-7365. Meanwhile, back in Discovery Mountain, Olivia has a couple of visitors to her classroom. Mrs. Olson, hi. Oh, hi, Piper. Hi. Hi, Yumi. Do you need lunch money for the cafeteria? No, Dad packed me a lunch. Oh, that's right. He packed me one, too. Aw, I love that. We're going to go see Chaplain Jake. Yeah, but first I said we should visit you. Yumi said she hadn't seen your classroom yet. Oh, I see. Well, thank you for visiting. This is my classroom. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Olson, can I go to lunch now? Have you finished your test, Logan? Yes, finally. Good job. You worked hard. I'm sure you'll do well on this test. Thanks, Mrs. Olson. I sure hope so. 
Logan, this is Yumi. Right. Thank you, Piper, for making introductions. Hey, Yumi. So your mom is a teacher. That must be pretty cool. She's not my mom. Oh, uh, sorry. I, uh... Well, I'd better get in line at the calf before the food's all gone. Sure. Run along, Logan. I'd better eat my lunch, too, I guess. Hey, Mrs. Olson. Can I borrow that book you told me about? I want to start reading it over lunch. Janet! Yes, of course. Let's see. It's here somewhere. Yumi, that wasn't very nice what you said about Mrs. Olson. I know. It it just slipped out. Here you go, Janet. Hey, that looks like an art book. Yeah, it's about painting. Cool. I love to draw, and I want to learn how to paint. That's how I started, too. Have you tried brush pens? No, not yet. Here, let's see. Um, I have a bunch in my backpack. Try them. There are all kinds of tutorials on YouTube. Awesome. Thanks, Janet. Oh, uh, by the way, Janet, this is my, uh, uh, this is Yumi. Oh, hi, Yumi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. My family moved here earlier this year, so I know what it's like to be the new kid. It can be kind of hard to make friends and- Yumi and I are best friends. Instant friends. Nice. Do you like to draw too, Yumi? I'm more of a writer. Yumi's really good at writing. We're making a book together. Piper, I haven't even written anything yet. It doesn't matter. I already know you're really good. I didn't know you liked to write, Yumi. Well, it's kind of a secret. <laughs> or at least it was. Thanks, Piper. I see. Piper, can I try one of those brush pens? It'd be cool to write calligraphy with it. Oh, no, here, Yumi. I'll give you some. No, you both can try them. Thanks, Janet. I can't wait. Thank you so much for letting me borrow this book, Mrs. Olsen. I can't wait to read it. You're welcome. Enjoy. Well, we're going to go and see Jake. Chaplain Jake. Right, Chaplain Jake. Have fun. I'll see you later at home. Okay. Bye, Mrs. Olsen. Chaplain Jake! Piper Yumi, hi! I'm just QCing the podcast. Ooh, is there another episode of Jake's Take coming out? Uh, yep, it drops tomorrow. QC? What's that? Oh, well, that's what we in the podcast biz call quality control. You see, I listen to make sure it's perfect, that there are no mistakes before we air it. Oh, Chaplain Jake, can I listen? I love Jake's Take. Well, okay, Piper. Here, put on these audiophile headphones. They're just the best. So cool. Here's the tablet and, uh, playing. Welcome to, Welcome Jake's, to Take. Jake's Take, an podcast you can trust. Yumi, I'm QCing Jake's Take. Yes, Piper, we can hear you. What? <laughs> uh, Jake, Piper is the best, best friend. God really was watching out for you when he brought you here, huh? I just don't deserve it. What do you mean, Yumi? I'm a terrible person. Wait, what? No way! Yeah, I am. Uh, uh, I shouldn't tell you. Yumi, you're new in town. You've got a new school and a new family. Oh, Jake. Just now, Logan said Olivia was my mom, and I was so rude. You were? Yeah, I said, she's not my mom. I just blurted it out like that. Oh, Yumi, I... Olivia must hate me. Of course not. My sister thinks you're awesome, Yumi. I'm always saying and doing terrible things, sort of like that younger son in the Bible story. The prodigal son? Yeah. He was so mean to his dad. I couldn't believe my ears. Yumi, we haven't finished that story yet. There's a lot more. Oh, don't waste your time telling me Bible stories. It's no use. I'm a terrible, terrible person. Yumi, you stop right there, right now. But... No, stop. Just stop. Did you ever learn John 3.16? Yeah, that verse is famous. I memorized it. Oh, you memorized it, huh? Good. Let's hear it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever. Did you hear that word? Yeah. You mean whoever believes in Jesus can have everlasting life. I'm a whoever. Oh, you sure are. And I believe in Jesus. 
And that means you can have a second chance. With Olivia? Yeah, with her and everything. Wow. Jake? Yeah? Would you pray with me? Of course. Dear Jesus, thank you for sending Yumi right here to Discovery Mountain. We're so glad that she's come. As Jake prayed, Yumi talked to God. She felt her heart soften, and she accepted Jesus' love. She believed that she could have a second chance. Meanwhile, Isabel still hadn't answered Mr. Simon on his offer of a second chance. And someone else made a phone call, an important phone call, as we'll soon discover. Let's listen. Hello? Hello. Is this the school superintendent's office? Yes, this is the superintendent, Mrs. Gomez speaking. Oh, Mrs. Gomez, what an honor to speak to you. Thank you. How may I help you today, Mr.? Reader, Donovan Reader. Ma'am? I saw something that just didn't look right at one of your schools today. Principal Weber took cash from a school supply vendor. Cash? You witnessed this firsthand? Well, yes. Ugh, all right. I'm listening. Director Doug, Reader might be able to help the situation at Isabel's school. I hope so. Her school seems to need a lot of help. And Isabel hasn't answered Mr. Simon yet. He's offered her a second chance, a chance to go home. Well, I hope she accepts it. Yumi just accepted an important second chance. She really did. The promise of John 3.16 really is available to whoever. Yes, whoever believes in him, Jesus, should not perish but have everlasting life. I've accepted Jesus, so have you, Miss Jean? I have. You know, accepting Jesus has made all the difference in my life. Director Doug, there might be someone listening who has never heard this verse before. Mm, That's true. To you listening, this promise is for you too. You can have a new life in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And no matter how far away from God you feel, you are a whoever. That means that this promise is for you. If you'd like to learn more about Jesus and to accept him into your heart, but you don't know where to start, well, write to us. Yeah, and we'll direct you to resources that can help you exercise your faith. Absolutely. And come back here for our next episode. Absolutely. And we'll see you then. You've been listening to Discovery Mountain. To listen to other episodes and to send us a message, visit us online at discoverymountain.com or write to us at Discovery Mountain, P.O. Box 999, Loveland, Colorado, 80539. And in Canada, write to Box 2127, Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, L1H7V4. Whoever was written by Jean Boonstra, produced by Steve Phillips, and post-produced in Ontario, Canada by Douglas Bruce and Danny Columbi. Recorded in Loveland, Colorado at the Voice of Prophecy Studios and in Bowmanville, Ontario. 